Hello, welcome to Wally Bra. And I want to talk about this machine here. This is my um, Axminster Mike Trimmer. I inherited this from my late father about a couple of years ago when he passed away. He had it a couple of years before that. But you can still buy these things. Axminsters themselves still sell them for about 230 euros. But also you can buy them from Rockler, um, which are a bit, quite a bit cheaper actually. And also Grizzly um, sell them as well in the USA. Um, they're pretty much the same uh, piece of a kit, made in Taiwan, like a lot of stuff, you know. But it is a good solid little tool, and it's actually really useful. It's not a full blown guillotine in the sense that, well, it is a guillotine, but not like those, those giant things you put your foot on and they chop your big old picture frames in one hit. They're not like that. You do need to pre cut your mitres first with your chop saw or your, mit or your mitre saw. In this case, I use my DeWalt. And I'm going to show you how to um, adjust it because you do need to adjust them. You have to adjust them for 90, but also you need to adjust them for 45. They don't have a 22 and a half degree uh, angle for um, hexagons, yes, eight sided. Um, hexagons, not hexagons. Oh, anyway, whatever it is. <laughs> I'm an idiot, don't worry. And basically, you, you have to make some fine adjustments. So I'll bring you in a bit closer in a second just so I can show you what I'm doing. But basically, we need to adjust the stops for these fences for 45 and 90 to make it easy to set up. I do I do recommend that you pretty much have to set it up every time you want to use it really if you're going to do anything really fine. Um, but once you've got set up once, you generally but you don't have to touch it again. You know, create mitres. It's a good idea, isn't it? Anyway, I'll bring you in a bit closer and I'll show you what I'm going to do. do, do, do. And I'll try not to press any buttons on this camera. That's a bit awkward. So I'll put you onto that tripod there. And get you down here. And let's bring you in over here. Alright, here we go. This is the Axminster. There you go. MT1 mitre trimmer. Uh, that's its handle thing. And it slots in the back. So you can actually move that backwards and forwards. And it slices your mitres or your 90 degrees. Now the 90 degree one is actually quite easy to do. Um, and I'll explain that now. Basically, if you have a, a board such as, say for instance, this piece of wood here, when I prepared earlier, and you want to cut a 90 or trim a 90 degree, not cut, trim, and that is a trimmer. This is not a um, chop saw, it's a trimmer. It cleans up the, the cut you've already made. So if you want to do a 90 degree uh, cut using this machine, guillotine, whatever you like to call them, in this case it is actually guillotine, what you can do is, you've got the, the set, at the moment it should be at 90 degrees, but you might need to adjust it. But one good way of doing it is, oh, one point, your test piece of wood needs to be, make sure it's parallel on both faces. I'm not 100 certain this one is. But what you can do is, you place this in here like so. You can make your cut. You place it in there. Don't put your fingers in there because you'll chop them off. Now, unless you want to do your cigars, don't do it. You can make your cut all the way along that 90 mil piece of pine. So I've made one cut one direction. As you can see there, that's pretty smooth. Pretty damn smooth. All you do is, you flip it around. I can't remember if I flip it around now. You flip it, around, flip it over like so to do your next 90 degree. Well, you bring your cut across and you can have a visual. So, oh, is that touching at any, uh, touching or any gaps? So you can put it across there. If there's no gaps, you're pretty certain that is at 90 degrees. But let's say, for instance, it wasn't. Yep, yeah, that's bang on. So if that was, because I haven't just adjusted it, all you have to do to adjust it is loosen this Allen bolt here. And it's not that one, is it? Yes, it is that one. That size. I think it's 4mm. It falls at 5mm. 5mm, I think it is. Anyway, you have to you loosen that one, and then there's a cam around it. This little brass thing here is a cam, and it turns around. So effectively, it's a rest. So you can rest it against it. So all you have to do is set it at 90 degrees using this method here, technique, making the through cuts all both ways, and then moving the fence jet gently in either direction and set it at 90 each time. And then um, make another cut and then flip it over. And if there's not a gap, when you bring this over like so, you're good. 
but also what you can do, you can use your um, combination screw, such as this Rabone, Chesterman, and you can fit that around like so, and you can use your square, as long as your square is square, and you can check that, doing the, you know, testing your set, or checking your square for square, and that is pretty much there, it's touching, come on, as you can see, <clears throat> all the way along. Be careful you don't obviously touch this edge with the metal because you don't and potentially put a nick in it into your plane blade or plane dog, your guillotine blade. So you'd be careful, don't touch that. You just want to make sure it's there and it's touching all the way along, which that one is. So that is, as far as I'm concerned, pretty much at 90 degrees. So you can tighten that down to set at 90 degrees, but then what you do is then you then move the cam up against it, like so, and then you tighten that up, but then you can test that using the bit of wood method, using your parallel piece of timber, otherwise normally this would be mounted somewhere, you'd have, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't really have it laying back, you'd have it in a fixed position so you can use it so you haven't got to, you know, have it keep moving about on you. So you place it in there like so, you make one cut, you flip it over and you check to see whether that's touching all the way along and if it's not, you're not square. And it's not square now, so I've, I thought that was okay, but obviously it wasn't, so I need to make a slight adjustment. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to loosen this here again, I'm going to loosen that one and bring it slightly over, because that's the direction I feel it needs to go in, I'm going to make a cut. Once you've made the cut, double check it's making contact all the way along after the made cut, just in case you've slipped. That's moved out a little bit and you've got a curvy cut. Then turn it over and see whether or not it's going to try and make a cut. In this case, so that is clearly too far this way. I need to push it out a little bit more. And you keep doing this until you're pretty much confident that it is true. So you make one cut first, hold it square, flip it over, and see if you've got contact all the way along. And I'm actually making it worse. So I need to bring it back again. And then cut. So I'll bring you over here so you can see the gap in between. So bring it over here, look. So we flip it over. So it needs to come this way, just a fraction. The, the amount you've got to move is actually quite tiny. Because what you're trying to do, you're half it, you're basically half an error each time you do it. You don't want to make the error. That's getting better. Maybe a bit more. Let's try again. Double check. Flip it over. So now you can see there there's no gap at all all the way along. So now I know that's 90 degrees. I find this far well, this way is kind of feel-proof really. It's a bit when you uh, check your square for square and you put on the edge of your bench, you draw a line, you flip it around, draw a line again, and if the line's in exactly the same place, you know your square is square. So this is basically the same method. Doing the mitres are slightly different. These are your adjustments for your mitres, and some people get a bit confused with these things, because I did at first, what side this pin goes onto the actual fence itself. It actually goes onto the opposite side. So I'll bring this around so you can see. This actual fence has a little slot at the bottom here, and it's angled, and, it's got, and it literally just rides over the top of the pin. And then it locks on, onto the pin in the other direction, and I just cut my finger. Be careful here, because it pokes through there 
Make sure that's in the middle. Yeah, so if you're doing it like outside the accident and you pick it up, you've got the sharp edge. And like I just did, I've got to cut myself. Look at that. That's <laughs> good. Move the handle up. The next one we're going to do is a 45. I already set it to 45, so it should be bang on. But I've only actually set it to 45 using the mitre. So let's pull this out of the way. So hopefully I don't cut myself again. Got my claret bleeding from my fingers. La, 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 la. Oh, where am I going? All right, so bring it over the hook. So, so I've got that on my fence here, like so. On the uh, on the side of this uh, guide here, which carriage carries the blade itself, I bring that down and across to the fence, and hopefully it makes contact all the way along the rule without any rocking. So, it's, you know, so and that is that's perfect. Like that, but you adjust it. By loosening, let's grab the other four mil. I think it's four mil. Four mil. Um, yeah, four mil. Allen, and you loosen these two screws here. There's one there, and there's one on the other side. Let's squeeze it out of the way for a second. So you loosen those two there, and this whole thing twists in the camera arrangement again, and in fact make it closer or further away. There are two marks on here that etched into the um, or stamped into the actual. Oh, that might come off there. That. <laughs> stamped into the actual um, table of the mitre trimmer and you could use them as rough guide if you want but the problem when you're doing four, uh, 445 well, yeah, 490 degrees or 845s uh, to make a picture frame the slightest error will make that last joint not marry up you'll, you'll need to do a bit of fine tuning so basically when you pull this once you've got this in the, in the position where you want it what I do is I, I bring it right over like so but then I pull back and forward, set this to the 45 so I'm 100% confident, then adjust this disc here until that pin is touching, so it's always in exactly the same position. And then from that, I'm deep, oh, deep than I thought, <laughs> and from that I can then um, cut my 45 onto my piece of wood. And first I would obviously have a <clears throat> mitre to 45 like so, which we've done onto the chop saw. I can then bring this over, like I say, go to the other side of the pin, and you can lock that down so it's not any movement. And then I can bring this across like so, like that, and then bring the blade over to trim the end or to my mark, and then make my cut. If I bring it around there, like so, so you can see the cut. You see up there? Just about, and then that peels that off. Like a, like a pencil shaving. So, they're quite easy to set up. You have to obviously make sure everything is kept tight. And the, everything, because these cast iron tops, if you don't use them very often, put a, lot, you know, a bit of a coat of oil on them just so they don't rust on you and end up with like rusty surfaces like I did. And like all this pitting down here on the actual knives. Anyway, that is my little video on how I set up my Axminster MT1 mitre trim. It's the same as the Rockler and also the Grizzly that you find on... Hammers. <laughs> oh. yeah. mm. They don't hurt that bad, the old vampires do. Anyway, while you're here, if you most kind, then click like and subscribe and maybe the little bell icon because then you get a warm, fuzzy feeling in your pocket and that'll be me uploading another video. Anyway, thank you for watching. Wally Boy. Mummy! I need a blaster! <laughs>